welcome back to the Chronically Fearless vlog. Happy Valentine's Day! It's Tasha and I have a special guest here with me today. What's up everybody? My name is Anthony Morgan. I'm Tasha's lovely boyfriend that you guys have heard so much about. <laughs> AKA Fearless Bay. And we're here today to talk to you guys about us. Um, to celebrate Valentine's Day, we just kind of want to talk about how we met, um, answer some different questions about our relationship, and talk about you know how we deal with chronic disease um, and uh, us, I guess. <laughs> I'm airing all her dirty laundry. Get ready. I don't have dirty laundry. She has a lot of dirty I don't laundry. I have dirty laundry. She needs to go full clothes right now. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> anyway, stay tuned for more. So, what do you want to talk about first? I think we should talk about how we got together and how you curbed me initially. I think that would be a great story. You want to tell a story? Should I tell a story? No, actually, you tell the story first. There's two sides to every story, okay. Or we can tell them at the same time, and I can chime in, or you can chime in, and... Okay. So, it was 2015. Hmm. Um, a family friend of mine came to me and said, Oh, I have somebody for you. He's a really nice guy. Blah, blah, blah. Show me his picture. And Wait, what'd you think, what'd you think when, I, when you saw the picture? That's what we need to know. That's very important. <laughs> yeah, tell the world. Uh, so I saw his picture. I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. And What did you think, though? What did I think? <laughs> did you think I was saucy? Did you think I was attractive? What'd you think? Honestly, he just kind of looked like one of those guys. You know, like, it was one of those where he was, like, posted up on some wall. And he was like, you know, I... Um, <laughs> you know those pictures that guys take trying to look cool? Try? Mm -hmm. I'll never try to try, look cool. Try. I don't try to, I just try to do me. But continue story, continue. Anyway, I was like, okay, I'll try it out. I mean, I was in the beginning stages of talking to somebody, um, but nothing was definite yet, so I thought I'd, you know, separate my eggs. Um, so I gave it a shot, and she scheduled a time for us to, like, meet her house she didn't want to make it like a formal date just to meet each other and at and first greet. she wanted to make a formal date we were <laughs> supposed to meet it was like a, she told me it's gonna be a blind date at an italian restaurant all this stuff i was like no i can't i don't i don't do the blind dates so we decided to meet her at her home do you continue from that okay so when i got there um yeah we were talking, but it was pretty quiet and a little bit awkward. Um, it was awkward? I don't know. Really, really being awkward. There were awkward silences. Because they were like, oh, what's your name? What's your name? What do you do? What do you do? Where do you live? Where do you live? And I was like, dang. But, um, you know. Um, I think she was just sidetracked at the time. That's another story. In a way, yes. Yes, I definitely was. Um, but... I really did want to give it a chance. I really did. Until. She wanted to give it a chance. But she <laughs> didn't give it a chance. No, because this guy told me, oh, you know what? Let's meet at Fridays one time. We go out for drinks or something. You know he let me walk out of the house without getting my number. Yeah, but I got it two days later on Instagram. Slid in them DMs. Yeah, he Is asked he for still? my Instagram but didn't ask for the number. Social media has gotten y'all all messed up. Because how? How? Relax. But moral story is, I still got the number two days later. when I felt... I don't know. I just got it. So... And I thought, there, no. I thought... I thought that meant that he didn't... I guess he wasn't that, like, pressed for it. I didn't think he was that interested. If you could forget to get a whole person's whole number. Hey man, just because you're thirsty doesn't mean you're gonna get a drink. That's what I was told at a young age. <laughs> so I'm never ever gonna be pressed or forced it. Um, but yeah, so I did get the number. Uh, we text. It wasn't even that long of a conversation, but basically I asked her to go with me to Apple Lounge on Friday, which she humbly declined. Um, and then the next time I reached out to her, she didn't respond. So 
If somebody doesn't respond to my text one time, I'm not gonna ladies, text you again. Ladies, I'm not just gonna like text you again because just like your heels, your standards need to be high. No, but relax, hold on. Before you get there, <laughs> my reason is if somebody curves me once, I'm not gonna reach out reach out to them again. Because nobody wants to be the guy that's saved in the girl's phone as do not answer or Mr. Press or curb. Like I don't wanna he be was that guy. With Anthony Morgan. It was never all of that. Oh no, I'm not saying it was because after you didn't respond to me once, I didn't text you again for like two years. <laughs> so that's why. You know, I'd rather Let save me face. Say my piece. Let me say my piece. Okay, so the reason why I declined the date, and actually you forgot to mention the part where I accepted it first. But then I was going out with my friends earlier that night and I was just gonna meet up with him later. But then I thought for somebody who forgot to get my number and needed to ask for it on Instagram later. And actually, it was not two days later. It was like a good week later. Who's counting? To me, that shows you're not that interested. So, yes, the first attempt that you're trying to get a date after that, of course I was going to say no. Like, pride and what's it called said, no, you should say no. Because he needs to try harder after forgetting to get my number. And he just didn't try again. So, that showed me, all right, I guess he really don't care that much. Of course... I was talking it's to somebody else, and Anthony forgets out. to mention that he was talking to somebody else also. No, so he time, was distracted time out, time as out, well. No, time out, time out. <laughs> I wasn't talking to anybody else. I was single at the time. I wasn't talking to anybody else. Like, not talking in that way, but, you know, I was single, living my life. Um, but regardless of the fact, um, it's a two-way street. You could have reached out to me as well. You didn't think about that, now did you? It has to be a two-way street. You yeah, gotta show some true. interest. I gotta show some interest. So I attempted to take you out, and then I attempted to text you, and got no response. That's two curves. That's two <laughs> curves. You don't want to get that three. There's, there's no three of me. Two <laughs> curves, and I'm I'm skating, and that's what I did. And so, um, about a uh, little. A little less than two years later, it was like in February 2017. Um, it was my great grandmother actually passed in January of 2017, and we had her funeral in February. And um, basically, at my great grandmother's wake, I'm sorry, it was my great grandmother that passed away, not my grandmother. At my great grandmother's wake, um, I gave a really nice speech and Tasha's mother happened to be in attendance and you know she saw how well spoken I was and how elegant I was dressed and how I carried myself and so she came home and you know told Actually, Tom, she texted me as well yes saying that, you know, how handsome he was exactly all of those nice things that Tasha failed to recognize the first time around I don't know why it like I don't know why, but, um, so yeah, the next day, Tasha decided to show up at my grandmother's repast, and she was wearing a nice blue and white dress, and I saw her, I was like, yeah, that's me, that's all me, and so, of course, I went over and talked to her, um, she was trying to act like she wasn't interested again, of course she was. You skip the part. What parts did I skip? First of all, when I got to the repast, my mom kept forcing me to go and give my condolences, even though I was heading over there, but she wanted me to do it right then, because I think she really wanted this match to be made. She saw this as a second chance. She so, saw the flame. I went over there, and that's when I met his mom, because um, she shook my hand, and then whispered to our family friend, um, Ebu, <laughs> she whispered to her, she was like, I still want it to happen. So we said hi to each other. I was like, sorry for your loss, you know, all of that. And then I, I went back to my table. I was like, mm. Then he came over to the table and he said, So you still got the same number? And I said, Yeah. You going, are you going to act this time? And he said, Yeah. And then I texted her the very <laughs> next day. We set up a date, and the rest is history. I knew she wanted me, but you know, sometimes you gotta make people wait two years. I'm a gem. That's why he had to wait two years. So, now we're going to get into the dating game. 
we're gonna answer. I already won the you. dating game. Matter, matter of fact, I already won the game. But we're just gonna play to play. I'm very competitive. I'm gonna win again. This guy gets mad at taboo. Uno. I don't get Ludo, mad. Ludo, that's an African game if y'all didn't know. I'm a Every, competitor. Everything. I'm a competitor. I hate losing more how than about, I like how, winning. How about we get to the game? I hate how losing more than I like get winning. Get to the game. Competitor. Let's get to the I game. am a competitor. So, <laughs> we got some cards here. And um, we're just going to discuss these different topics that have to do with our relationship. And let's get into it. Let's go. I know Tasha's favorite food. It's easy. It's tola. Um, that's a dish from Sierra Leone. Uh, it tastes very good. In Liberia, we call it walaf. Um, that food damn sweet. Oh. <laughs> damn sweet. Anthony's favorite food is Liberian food, tobogi, which I actually don't like, but Anthony swears by I love tobogi. tobogi. I love tobogi. <laughs> Not beans, tubagi, regular tubagi, but plenty of kids with and some smoked fish, some pig feet, some trout, or some interest <laughs> as we call it, some country trick chicken. Yeah, I need it all in there. I need every last bit. I love tubagi. You should love tubagi too. If you don't, I get actually I gave tubagi to my Jamaican friend, my boy Mikey. If you watch this, what's up, Mikey? He's from Jamaica and he loved it. He said it was very spicy. He loved it. So if a Jamaican can enjoy tubagi. You can enjoy tubagi and you, yeah, I'm talking about you, yeah, you watching it, you can enjoy tubagi too. My favorite librarian food is palm butter. Mm-hmm. Palm butter rice, so sweet, so sweet. Palm butter rice, so sweet, so sweet. All right, we go to the next one. All right. <laughs> so, our first date, the second time around, <laughs> after she, you know, after we reconnected. Well, let's not rehash. Let's okay. Not rehash. Our first date, the second time <laughs> around, um, I was looking through her Instagram prior to her day, trying to get a feel, you know, trying to do some background on her. And I saw that she had went to Chicha, Chicha Lounge and she looked like she had a really good time. And so I was like, all right. She went there for her birthday, um, which ironically was like two weeks before. But I was like, all right, let me try to re rock, re rock the situation and, you know, use that as a location for our first date. Um, and so I did, and she was very excited. She loved the idea. We went there. Um, we enjoyed each other's company for about four hours. I made her late to go to, where are we going afterwards? I was she, going to golf. She's going to golf with... Uh, we go to a lot of places around here. Yeah, so she's going to golf If afterwards. you're not in Maryland listening to this, I apologize if you don't know all these locations. Yeah, she's going to golf lounge in downtown Silver Spring with probably Marie and Aisha. Um, and I made her late because... Those are my best friends. She just didn't want to leave because um, I was just wrapping her up. So yeah, good. we talked for a very long time. You should have seen me that. I was on my A game. Game was just, <laughs> uh, 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 I was dribbling, taking it to the whole layups, all types. Game was A1. Y'all can learn something from me. Don't don't judge a book by its cover. Y'all can learn a lot from Anyway, me. what he showed me that day was that like um, we had a lot of common, actually. We talked about everything. I didn't imagine that I could. I've never talked that much on a date, period. Um, that's how long we talked and I realized that we had so much in common and it was just such a refreshing change from that first time when it seemed a little bit awkward and we you know we didn't seem to connect and then this time it was just like really organic and nice and fresh and you should have seen what she was wearing oh my god (laughs) okay next question What's her dream car? I don't know. One day I'm gonna get her a Mercedes SL Coupe or something and put her in that. Um, wow, is that your dream car? Is that right? I'm not sure if that's your dream car. Actually, I would like a white Range Rover. Well, I'll get. I her know that. it's not the most. I, I know it's not a Mercedes, but then I might. I might also want a Tesla. I don't know. Actually, yeah, but Teslas. Yeah, either a white Range Rover, like really sleek, that only work to take to church or something, or a Tesla. Yeah, I Tesla. think it would be my dream car. What's, um, what's my dream car? Anthony's dream car. She doesn't know. I think he's a BMW type of guy. No? No, no my dream car would either be a... Um, 
it would probably be a uh, a wraith. You know, I like I like phantoms. I like Rolls Royce. I like the double R. Um, I know it's kind of cliche for some people, but <laughs> I don't know. Not too many people in my country own a double R, so I'll take a double R and be one of the first people there with it. One of the only people there with it, so. Okay. Okay. This one is uh, relatively easy. Um, this is Sasha's dream occupation, which she's doing <laughs> right now, um, running her brand. Um, which I believe will be very successful from the bottom of my heart. Not because she's my girlfriend, but I've seen the work that she puts into this. She also wants to be a stay-at-home mom while she does this, while she becomes a global influencer, a influencer global ambassador for wellness and chronic diseases, um, which I fully support. You know my dream of <laughs> um, Anthony loves music especially hip-hop um he used to want to work in the industry i'm not gonna say used to because i believe he still does anthony like i feel like he studies like rap music like <laughs> i know I like the back of my head his dream would truly to be an exec within the business whether it's marketing a producer a record label owner something but i know that that would really be his passion um, he has a lot of friends in it, and Anthony loves rap music. You would have thought he invented it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and I love Liberia too. Rap music in Liberia. <laughs> Ghana, Nigeria, Freetown, or Senegal, or Senegal's where it came from. I don't care if it came from there. I don't care what came yeah. from what. Liberia got the best jello, hands down. You come up, you come down, LIB is the best. Go ask your Jew. Go ask your Pa, go ask your Ma, go ask your C. <laughs> Can you speak what people will understand? Go ask anybody. They will tell you that LIB Jellof is the best. We put we put everything in our Jellof. Sometimes you might get some shrimp, you might get some beef, you might get some chicken. Everybody else, they just want to give you tomato paste and rice. What type of nonsense is that? Not everybody else. It's my turn. So, all I'll say is, you notice all these other countries are always fighting about who has the best jello, but you don't know, Sierra Leone stays silent because our jello fries and stew, we don't serve just tomato paste and rice, speaks for itself because it's just that bomb. Now, now Liberian jello fries taste good. I like it. However, nothing's better than home. Like, that's all I have to say. All I know is that <laughs> Liberian Jellof yeah. is <laughs> the it? best. I'm talking to you, Nigeria, you Ghana, you Sierra Leone, you They're Senegal, not. you Mali. Who else? Who of course cooks Jellof? Anybody else in the West? Next question. I'm talking to you all. L I B <laughs> Jellof is the best, and you know it. My best memory is when. Um, for my birthday, Tasha took me to a resort in San Juan, Puerto Rico, um, which is the best birthday gift I've ever received from a woman. Um, prior to that, the only gift I ever received from a woman was a Adidas t-shirt that was black and she threw it at me when she gave it to me. Uh, so that, uh, a, a trip to Puerto Rico in a resort on the beach is a billion times better than a black adidas t-shirt that you got on sale um but yeah it was an amazing trip um it was so relaxing we had so much fun we got to sleep in you got to go to the beach every day um she took me to a lot of amazing restaurants uh, i actually won some money in the casino after losing some money i won it back plus <laughs> more um it was just a great vibe actually i wish i could have stayed there for like a month and then came back um, but I love Puerto Rico. Shout out to all my Puerto Ricans. I do want to come back very soon. Give me a heart attack. You got running in the ocean. Oh, yeah. The ocean was great. That was my first <laughs> time in the ocean. That shit's amazing. It was a little scary at first. My heart was actually beating fast, like her heart, um, when I first got into the water because I can't really swim that well. But, yeah, it's it's great. Shout out to the La Concha. If you guys ever go to Puerto Rico, please go to the La Concha. It's <laughs> great. Um, 
I just, it was amazing. I, I really loved it and I really appreciate it. I have an amazing girlfriend. Um, so, thank you, babe. I, I love the trip. Um, I would have to say the same. Um, that was uh, my first vacation when we went to Puerto Rico. And we had a lot of fun. I, um, I feel like we bonded a lot. Um, just had some, like, um, relaxation time. I was really stressed out from work. Not stressed out, but just tired of it. And so was he. And we just had some time to relax. A nice, like, almost week-long vacation. And we got to see a lot of sights. And it was great. Okay, so now that we're done with the other questions, we're going to talk about me having multiple sclerosis how he found out, you know, how he's felt about it and how he's worked to sort of be a support system for me and how it impacts our relationship. All right, so how I found out that she had MS, um, prior to us going on a first date, the second time around, um, like I said, I was looking through her Instagram to find a date idea and I came across her blog and I literally read everything on her blog and on that first day like I read every <laughs> single thing like everything even at the bottom where it says copyright da, 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 the little circle C or circle R yeah I read <laughs> that too I read everything on that website um, it was uh, I don't want to say it wasn't shocking it was kind of like oh um, I didn't really think too much into it I was like okay she has MS but maybe my ignorance to MS, even though like she described it really well in her blog, but it still didn't think like it still didn't come off as a big deal to me. Um, Cause I, I one of my friends in high school had MS and he played basketball. He he seemed very regular to me, so like I never really I didn't really understand the disease all the way. And also, uh, Forty Drake's producer has MS also. I think Montel Jordan as well. Um, so there's like a couple prominent people out there who had it so and they didn't really they all seemed to live very normal lives So I was like if they could do it so can she so I didn't really it's something that I didn't really pay too much attention to um, I even forget that she has it sometimes not <laughs> as bad as that sounds because it, it just doesn't It's not something that really affects her. I don't know maybe because she's so fearless about it because she carries herself so well um, about it. It's not like something that you know some people when they get a disease they like they write the disease on their forehead and walk around with it like moping all the time. That's not what Tasha does. She just lives her life and um, because of that I feel like the people around her you know aren't as um, I guess frightened. frightened and have pity for her as much. Um, it's more like a, okay you have MS life goes on. Um, we're just gonna fight the disease and you know do the best things medically for it and pray for the best and go from there. I have no issue this with is it. Why he's fearless, babe, guys? Yeah, <laughs> um, I have no issue with it. Um, I think she'll live for a very long time. I'm gonna live for a very long time, um, and that's what that's that's what I have. That's what I wholeheartedly believe, and I think God is gonna bless her and. Hopefully, as the years progress, more medicine comes out to help fight the disease, and um, we'll just take it one day at a time, one month at a time, one quarter at a time, one year at a time, one decade at a time. You know, keep it pushing. Um, what was the next question? Uh, oh, that, I guess I answered. I kind of answered all three. It was in that long monologue, but yeah, I love my babe, and you know. I'm riding with her until the wheels fall off, no matter what. It is. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> so, how's this episode been? Oh, I think this was a great episode. Um, hopefully, we can have more guest appearances from Fearless Bay, aka Anthony. I'm charging her five hundred dollars. Oh time. my God, no, he will not. Um, but thank you guys so much for listening and listening to our love story and what things we have in common, what things we like, and just what makes us, us, and Tasha. Um, and I hope you guys continue watching and have a great Valentine's Day. And um, stay fearless. Stay fearless. Thank you.